Whoa, check out this data set. That's a cool looking bridge. Let's see how I did it. And welcome to another Indiana Drones video where I'm gonna go over data captured by a LiDAR drone. In this one, I went out and flew this truss bridge structure. It's an abandoned Route 66 bridge. I believe it used to have a, a road going across it, maybe a railroad track, I don't really know, but I thought it was really cool. And I said, why don't I go out there and capture this data set? Cause this is gonna be really cool. So this was flown in completely manual mode. So I manually flew this structure. I flew three passes on it. And I'm gonna go over my first impressions of the data set what I could have done to fly it better and capture more detailed structure out of this system. And then also just any other findings that I see whenever I'm looking at the data. So let's just jump right into it. So this right here is that bridge that I flew. And I actually, let's zoom out and kind of go over how I flew it first. I mean, first it looks awesome. Like this, this looks really, really good. I was standing right here at the end of this bridge. This is the uh, Route 66 State Park in, in Missouri. And I stood right here and I, I flew all the way down to the other landing, which was all the way over here. And then I flew back and down again. And then I kind of went up in the air and just zoomed back to me. So I did three passes, one right down the center, one off the left and one off the right. And I flew it about I was about probably 20 to 30 feet off of the structure at any given time. And you see the detail looks pretty amazing. Now, one thing I'm seeing right away, is see these black spots right here on the bridge. And this is step one of what I could have done better to capture the structure even better. Uh, the trigger interval of the camera that's attached to the LiDAR was set to about three seconds. And I think if I would have pushed that down to one second, it would have captured more photos on the Sony camera, which is attached to the LiDAR, and that would have colorized that in because what ended up happening is I was flying so low and so fast along this structure that the one photo to the next photo, I didn't capture this piece in that photo. So there's just a missing piece in that photo and that's why it didn't get colorized. Makes sense, but you can actually see in the elevation view of the data that it is all there. You know, so there, there is data right there. And then here's something else that's interesting. Now, look at this. So you can see, it looks like there's a little bit of a mismatch there. What exactly is that? Let's, let's take a look. Let's go to GPS time. Okay, so we can see this is actually from green and blue, which is two different times. So if I zoom out, you can actually see this is my one, two, three passes that I flew. And if I look at this right, I, I don't think it's actually any mismatch. What I think it is, is I didn't capture, it was, a, it was an occluded side of this. So yeah, when I came for the green side, it was getting a little bit more on this side of the structure. When I came from the blue side, I got a little bit more on this side of the structure. So probably what I could have done, I could have flown a down and back on the left-hand side, a down and back on the middle, and a down and back on the right, just to make sure if there was any occlusions I was getting, that would have been covered. But in all actuality, what I would probably do today is I would use the, our new, new facade mount that we've been working on that gives us the ability to take the lighter and actually move it to different angles. And then I would have flown those multiple passes just to make sure I got all those different angles. But this was meant to be just a, just an example. Just, I was just curious, how's it going to do, you know, total manual flight. There's no mission planning here. It's just line of sight. You know, it was after a long day of work and I saw this bridge and I said, Hey, this looks pretty cool. Let's go and map it. So I went and mapped this. Uh, what else? So look at this. This is actually kind of interesting. Let me go back to this RGB. So you can see here in the this lattice structure inside of these uh, these beams, it's like hollowed out here, like a little little lattices there. But then if you notice over here, it's a solid uh, I beam construction. Now I wonder why they did that. I bet I bet if we measure. I bet if we measure these spans, it's gonna be much shorter, so they were able to use the I-beam, but this over the river was a much larger span, so they had to use a different different construction in order to get that extra strength it needed. So let's let's actually go ahead and just let's see. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this uh, measurement tool and I'm gonna throw a point there and then move this point over here. So let's see. 
Let's kind of make kind of make it good. Let's go right in the middle. So if this is about 131 feet. It's, let's just say it's probably 132. You know, probably 100. So it's like 132 feet between these two structures. And then if I come over here to where it goes back to this I beam. Oh yeah, you can already see it. I mean, it looks it looks much shorter, but for the sake of it, let's go ahead and, and measure that. So that's about 62 feet. Uh, okay, that totally makes sense. So this span is much larger, so they had to make this taller. They had to add extra elements, probably to save weight, because, you know, if we we're thinking about objects under strain and, you know, tension and strain and compression. Actually, all the forces are actually just carried along the surface of a material. So really, the, the inside of a material doesn't really play much. It does play some in, in your shearing and your ductile strength. But whenever you're, you're bending something, it's, all the forces are really concentrated there at the surface. So having an element that's hollow, it enables you to make it lighter. Um, and then also you get the surface area that you have of this three-dimensional object. So that, that's probably why they did that. It's, if I had to make an educated guess, that would be why that happened. Um, what else? So let's, let's take a look at, let's come down here. You can see I actually was able, I had to like go up and down a few times because there was uh, some trees in the way. And so I was actually, if I look down the barrel here, zoom out. I think there was some, some trees, yeah. Basically right here along the, the right hand side, yeah, I had to kind of go, go up and around those trees in order to, to make this happen. Oh, yeah, and this is in a straight line. So that measurement I was quoting earlier was totally wrong. It's about 132 feet though. And this other one's probably about probably about 60 62 feet somewhere around there. How wide is this? Let's see. It is That's not right. I think that's yeah. Okay, that's way off. Let's grab that. Let's actually bring that up here. How wide are we? We are sitting right at, I'd say about 32 feet if we make this extra precise. Yeah, probably right at 32 feet. Uh, that's pretty cool though. I mean, this data set looks really cool. I'm gonna put it down in the link below so you guys can play with it as well. Uh, feel free to do some measurements. Let me know what you think. What do you think I could have done to make this data set better? You know, you always got to keep in mind what is the laser scanner doing whenever you're scanning. So you know, it's laser beams. They're going straight in straight lines. You know, there's no curves going on here. And this is a, it's doing a line scan. So it's getting a straight line as you go forward across the top of the structure. And so with that facade scan, uh, you can mount it sideways and then we can drop down to the side and we can get the side of the structures much better. So these columns here would have been captured better. You know, I think that's gonna be a really cool to see that in another video because we have some cool data sets that we already captured using the facade scan and it's, it's really cool. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot. And then we also have some data sets we captured taking the same lighter, this R2A, and putting it on a vehicle, mobile mounting, and then we also fly it on the drone, kind of merge those data sets together. Um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. What, what would you like to see in LiDAR data? I hope you kind of learned a few tidbits in this quick video about this, uh, this truss structure bid, uh, video. Uh, I don't think, don't quote me in all the uh, structural analysis. This is just from some uh, you know, engineering courses I took in school. <laughs> I think it's mostly still uh, from my memory probably right, but you know, you know how it gets. So we're, 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 if you don't do it every day designing these structures, then probably aren't saying it right. But one thing I do know is lasers and drones. So I do know how I can capture this site better and make it a, make a better solid model. And I think by flying, like I said earlier, down and back on both the left, the center, and the right, and then also doing that facade scan and just merging all that data into one. And that's, that's gonna be the best way of doing this. 
But for a Friday afternoon and flying for 20 minutes, I think this was pretty good. So if you guys like the video, please like, subscribe, share the video, and uh, I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.